Welcome to the ASCRS bootcamp session on the acute diagnosis and management of large bowel obstruction. In this session, we would like for you to know exactly what to do if you are called for a patient with a large bowel obstruction. The goals and objectives of this session are to know the do's and don'ts of taking a consult for large bowel obstruction, review key history and physical exam points, review the differential diagnosis for large bowel obstruction, and review the confirmatory test needed to adequately work up a large bowel obstruction. Hi, this is Dr. Smith in the emergency department. I have a Mrs. Stuckey, a 65-year-old woman with a history of colon cancer that comes in with severe abdominal pain associated with nausea. She does not report vomiting. She was seen by her primary care physician last week due to constipation and abdominal bloating. She was set up for a colonoscopy with her gastroenterologist. She started having severe abdominal pain and bloating midway through her oral prep. Her last bowel movement was three days ago. What other information would you want to ask Dr. Smith, the ED physician? What is it appropriate to order over the phone? It is appropriate to review the patient's vitals, radiographic findings, and the treatment the patient has already received while in the emergency department with the ED physician. It is not appropriate to admit or discharge the patient without seeing the patient first, nor is it appropriate to render a treatment decision such as automatically recommending a gastroenterology consult without seeing the patient yourself first. Prolonging the conversation by asking too much history over the phone can waste time, especially in an unstable patient. The key is to see the patient in a timely manner so that you can obtain as much information from the patient themselves. Each hospital may have their own guidelines regarding the amount of time a consult should be seen. It is appropriate for you to ask the ED physician to make sure that the patient has isotonic IV fluids started and to ask for abdominal films and labs, such as a CBC and a comprehensive metabolic panel. It's also appropriate to ask the ED to place a nasogastric tube if the patient has been vomiting and a Foley catheter to help monitor the patient's response to resuscitation while you are making your way to see the patient. This improves the efficiency and timeliness of care. The key to managing a patient with a large bowel obstruction is taking a thorough history and physical. An initial global assessment is very important to help you triage this patient's workup and management. Please pause this presentation and take the time to review the key elements of reviewing a history and physical for a patient with a large bowel obstruction. As you are seeing this patient, you should have a mental running list of possible diagnoses. Your history, physical, lab tests, radiologic tests, and endoscopic studies should narrow your differential step of each step of the way. Please pause this slide to review the differential diagnosis of large bowel obstruction based on location. It looks like Mrs. Stuckey's films are back. This is Dr. Smith from the ED. Do we have a plan for Mrs. Stuckey? It looks like she could be having a colonic stent complication. This is a good example of the importance of viewing all the key elements of a history, including past radiation and procedural specifics. In addition, a timely recommendation can be given since the plain films were ordered in advance. Your treatment plan may de be dependent on radiographic and endoscopic confirmatory tests, which can also be ordered in the emergency department. As previously noted, abdominal plain films, specifically an ab abdominal series to include an upright chest and left lateral decubitus film, is a good initial test to order. In the stable patient, the colon and rectum can further be evaluated by a CT scan, barium enema, and endoscopy. The anus can further be evaluated by CT scan and anoscopy. No further testing is needed in an unstable patient in most cases. While a MRI and endorectal ultrasound is used to evaluate anal and rectal cancers and fistulae, these tests are rarely needed in the acute diagnostic management of a large bowel obstruction. There are many different types of anoscopes. It is important to seek a light source with this tool. The anoscope evaluates the anal canal and distal rectum. It should be used when there is concern for anal and distal rectal pathology. When using the anoscope, Look for friability of the mucosa, gross blood, masses, and fissures. The rigid proctoscope, on the other hand, bypasses the anal canal with proper insertion and is useful for evaluation of the rectum and distal sigmoid colon. It should be used when there is concern for distal sigmoid and rectal pathology. You should assess for mucosal friability, gross blood, 
masses, and mucosal changes. The flexible sigmoidoscope and colonoscope can be key to diagnosing an, the etiology of a large bowel obstruction. These tests should be used when there is a concern for colon and rectal pathology, such as a sigmoid volvulus. Most patients can tolerate a flexible sigmoidoscopy without any sedation. A colonoscopy can be done either in the conscious sedation room in the ED or in the GI suite. You should note friability, gross blood, masses, foreign bodies, and mucosal changes. If the mucosa appears ischemic, you should not pass the scope beyond the point of ischemia. Oftentimes, these tests will need to be done with an unprepped bowel. However, if you feel that a bowel prep is necessary, the patient should be admitted. An NG, NG tube can be placed in a patient who has been vomiting with a partial large bowel obstruction to facilitate giving the oral prep. Much caution, however, must be taken to prevent aspiration. If there is a strong concern for aspiration, then a bowel prep should not be given. These tests should not be performed if there is a concern for perforation or complete bowel obstruction. A CT scan is a very useful tool to get a relatively quick assessment of the colon, rectum, and anus. There are three specific routes of contrast that should be considered when ordering the scan. IV contrast is recommended in all patients with normal renal function. Those with an IV dye allergy can be pre-medicated before the scan per the hospital protocol. Oral contrast is recommended if there is a concern for fistula, mass, and motility dysfunction. With the latter concern, follow-up plain films of the abdomen can be obtained to follow the location of the contrast. Just as described in the previous slide with an oral bowel prep, oral contrast can be given down an NG tube in someone who has been vomiting with a concern for a partial bowel obstruction. If your suspicion for a complete bowel obstruction is high or the risk of aspiration is high, then oral contrast is not recommended. Rectal contrast can be helpful in assessing the mid to distal colon and rectum for an anastomotic leak, stricture, fistula, or mass. In many institutions, a member of the operating team should be available to administer the rectal contrast, especially in a patient with a distal re recent rectal anastomosis. Please note that this route of contrast may not be the best for evaluation of the distal, distal rectum and anus. The catheter tip used to administer the contrast could bypass these areas. A barium enema is useful for the evaluation of the mid to distal colon and rectum, particularly the evaluation of an anastomotic leak, stricture, fistula, or mass. The same principles for giving rectal contrast for a CT scan apply. Water-soluble contrast should be used if there is a concern for a leak. In conclusion, a good history and physical will help guide most of your management. Therefore, always go see the patient. Workup and treatment will depend on the overall health of the patient, stability of the patient, patient disease, and disease location. Anticipating the needed diagnostic studies and treatment plans, such as fluid resuscitation, will improve outcomes and efficiency of patient care. Please utilize the following resources to get more information about the particular diseases that cause large bowel obstructions. Thank you for your attention.